On today's episode, Boeing's and NASA's dilemma with Starliner. As NASA and Boeing continue to study possible return scenarios for SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore, their time on the International Space Station has extended from just over a week to months, with some estimates now suggesting that they may not come home until early 2025. So what's going on? Boeing engineering teams report that the erratic thruster firing issues discovered on orbit were the result of heat soak from solar radiation swelling some seals, and that this problem is no longer an issue. Helium leaks are still in play, but they were known before launch, and if leakage was an ongoing issue, they would not have delayed the return, but would have brought them back as soon as possible. Now, there's plenty to talk about in the mainstream media about the technical issues with the Boeing spacecraft, but the real engineering issue is not rooted in pressure vessels, valves, or lines. It's management. Starliner has launched previously to the International Space Station uncrewed, so the capability for fully autonomous flight exists at Boeing. Now, this flight was configured for considerable human piloting, so the obvious option for Williams and Wilmore, which is to bring them back with a SpaceX capsule, may become necessary if NASA and Boeing can't reconfigure Starliner to work around the thruster issues. Now, what's the zero-risk option? Well, it's to fly the astronauts back by SpaceX and then fly Starliner back empty, fix the issues, and then launch it again. Now, if Starliner returns unharmed, it will look like an abundance of caution, but then everyone will come out looking good. But God forbid, if the astronauts lose their lives in the vehicle, it will likely end the program and NASA will likely start shopping for another alternative. Sierra Space is a lifting body type spacecraft almost ready for unmanned launch now, with a crewed version to follow, and NASA itself has its own capsule, although that's designed for space exploration, not transport. Now for Boeing, this program has been a money loser and a defective spacecraft in the light of Boeing's current manufacturing issues just isn't a good look. Now, if someone at Boeing asked me, and they decidedly haven't, I would recommend that the firm sell the entire program to another contractor or turn it over to NASA for program management. This would change a little from an engineering standpoint, but it would allow a new management team to completely rebrand the program and generate the public perception of an entirely new system. And since Starliner is undoubtedly becoming more reliable over time, the planets could align figuratively and NASA could have their backup transport capability. And I think the logic of Boeing getting out from under this program makes even more sense if NASA goes the conservative route and brings the astronauts home with a SpaceX vehicle, especially if Starliner burns up on re-entry. The political repercussions of NASA funding an alternative spaceflight program that costs much more than Elon Musk's offering, with a slow development timeline and multiple technical issues, are obvious. Now, NASA was right to not put all their eggs in one basket, and the Boeing program is only now starting to develop reliability, but few government agencies have their successes and failures so much in the public eye and in front of an appropriations committee as NASA. They need to demonstrate success. So what's the right call? Well, if a management team elects to bring them home on the Boeing spacecraft, there better be enough high-level simulations so that the decision can be made with equivalent or higher confidence of mission success as they used to launch them in the first place. And even then, if there's a disaster, heads will roll. But that's why high-level managers are in the big money. It's all about managing risk, and spaceflight is still a risky business. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by Engineering.com. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.